Okay, dear colleagues, <coughs> I am happy to see all of you on my talk today. And uh, also I am very grateful to the organizing committee for the possibility to talk to you about the uh, bioactive lipids we are working with. As you see from uh, the title, I will be talking about the isolated uh, dopamine. And I would like to stress, first of all, that uh, such molecules are endogenous ones. They are not artificial, not, uh, you know, carried in the uh, mammalian organism. No, they are synthesized inside, uh, inside the nervous system and they have their own function. And uh, it is their function what we are trying to discover. Uh, and. Uh, in fact, uh, when we started this work, uh, the only thing uh, which was known about the activity of uh, the NSO dopamines was uh, their ability to uh, interact with the venenoid receptor <coughs> uh, in the pain transduction and to induce cell death. Okay, we said, uh, but uh, what about other activities? We know that at least um, the molecules which could induce cell death are able sometimes to induce cell differentiation as well. Uh, and we know that uh, there are other molecules which are able to uh, influence cell proliferation, but usually those are different molecules. And uh, uh, at first we did not attribute all of these uh, activities to our molecules, but as I will show you, that was uh, not exactly the situation we had. Uh, some words about the NSO dopamines. Here you can see their structures. <coughs> In vivo, usually uh, NSO dopamines with a long chain fatty acid residue with uh, from one to six uh, double bonds occur. But uh, their quantities in vivo are quite low. Uh, you can see here the quantities quite low. Uh, on the other hand, um, these substances, being not very abundant, are able to induce multiple uh, effects in, the, uh, in cells and in tissues. You can see here that they are able to interact with. Um, some ion channels uh, with uh, cannabinoid receptors and with uh, various uh, intracellular targets as well. Uh, but anyway, our work was uh, first focused on the um, cytotoxicity of these compounds and uh, the first question we addressed was uh, what will happen if we incubate our substances not for uh, a short period of time, that is one day, but for several days. We expected to see uh, the increase of cytotoxicity, but instead uh, what we saw was that high concentrations of uh, substance uh, killed cells almost instantly. You can see here, day one, all cells dead. Uh, then low concentrations of uh, substances uh, did not uh, kill cell even after a long uh, term from the, uh, after even a long term incubation, even more, they were able to stimulate cell proliferation, not very uh, to a large extent, but uh, still it was a significant stimulation. But uh, intermediate concentrations of uh, substances uh, had a cytostatic effect, and. Uh, when we looked at the cells uh, in the microscope, we saw uh, something uh, interesting. Uh, that is, uh, the cells that was uh, a culture of the red uh, chromocytoma cell line uh, developed along processes. I'm not sure you can see them here, but they are there. So uh, the surviving cells had processes and uh, we hypothesized that uh, that was a differentiation induction. Uh, so the overall scheme of the substance activity was uh, changing. At low concentrations, they induced uh, cell proliferation, then 
induced cell differentiation, and when the concentration of NSO dopamine reached some critical level, the most of cells, or even all of cells, died. Uh, when we analyzed the uh, differentiation marker expression, we confirmed our hypothesis about the uh, differentiation induction. And uh, for the red chromatosoma cell line, uh, it was a neuronal type of differentiation. You can see here the neuronal marker uh, increase and the gonio uh, marker disappearance. Uh, for the red glioma cell line, the situation was uh, more complex because uh, here we expected to see two glial markers, GFAP and S100 beta, to uh, increase and at least remain, but uh, only one of them stayed in the cell line after a two week treatment with NSO dopamines. On the other hand, uh, uh, a marker of early neurons uh, remained. Uh, NSD, uh, while other uh, neuronal markers disappeared. So we can uh, propose that here uh, the differentiation occurs, but maybe not to a full extent, and some other signals are required, or maybe a more long term incubation. The differentiation uh, with NSO dopamines was uh, reversible. And when we removed such substances from the incubation media and uh, cultivated cells for another two weeks, most uh, marker expression returned to the uh, basal level, uh, except for uh, the immature neurons marker beta-3 tubulin, for example. Uh, maybe uh, such cells, uh, subpopulation gets eliminated, uh, maybe it is a time which is responsible. Uh, then <coughs> we tried to see whether different NSO dopamines are able to differentiate our cells. And we saw that most uh, substances we tested are able to induce at least uh, processes development. Uh, but the concentrations required for this activity are correlated with the substances cytotoxicity. For example, for these substances, uh, the concentration of several micromoles per liter are enough, while for this one, uh, it is uh, several tens of micromoles per liter which are required. Uh, Having established the activity of the substances, we turned our attention to how does that happen. And uh, first of all, uh, we tested several uh, standard uh, substances such as nso cysteine and uh, nitric oxide uh, synthesis inhibitor and saw that, uh, in fact, uh, nso dopamines induce a neuronal form of uh, nitric oxide synthase uh, expression here. And this protein is responsible for cell death induction, uh, nitric oxide generation, and the reactive oxygen species generation. Uh, in fact, uh, we saw that this same protein generates both uh, nitric oxide and reactive oxygen species and that was described in the literature before us, so we just confirmed this fact. As to the signal transduction to the uh, nitric acid synthase, so we performed an inhibitor analysis with uh, several knockdown studies and found that upstream of this protein uh, there is um, a receptor of the non-CB1-CB2 uh, group, uh, G-protein receptor, which uh, transdu transduces its signal to phospholipase C, then uh, IP3R, calcium, comodulin, uh, modulated kinase 4, not 2, to surprise, and finally the transcription factor PREP gets activated. And downstream of the transcription factor thread, there is a uh, nitric oxide synthase, uh, GNK, P38, and uh, all the machinery linked to apoptosis. 
uh, we think that uh, somewhere here at the prep level there is a branching of the activity of NSO dopamines because uh, not because well um, if uh, the signal is uh, quite mild uh, it uh, gets rooted to the uh, other targets of uh, prep uh, where maybe nitrocoxid synthase and differentiation occurs. But if uh, the signal is strong enough, uh, GNK and P38 uh, uh, gets activated and the apoptosis develops. Uh, of course, uh, uh, this work is uh, still not completed uh, because uh, we um, do not know what exactly happens here. We have elucidated this part of the scheme with the signal transduction through GPR55, which is the exact member of the non cv one cv 2 family uh, down to prep and the uh, nitric oxide synthase, but uh, we do not know the exact role of nitric oxide in the cell differentiation induction, and this branch is uh, our hypothesis based on the literature data. However, the probability of this branch is uh, quite high. Uh, to conclude, uh, let me talk uh, a bit about the perspectives of this work and uh, what uh, we would like to be done in the future. First of all, of course, we would like to get this scheme completed and understand all the links which are here here uh, to get the whole picture. Then, of course, we would like to know what is the role of the activities we observe, because uh, uh, NSO dopamines were never linked before to the uh, embryogenesis, almost not linked, because uh, there are a few uh, works by, by our collaborators which observed the ability of these substances to influence freshwater hydra and uh, sea urchin regeneration. And maybe we are dealing with a, a new player in the embryogenesis or tissue regeneration field. Uh, or maybe uh, it is uh, not NSO dopamines which uh, play the role. Because, as you saw, uh, the concentration in vivo of these substances is quite low uh, compared to the concentration which is active on the cells and uh, is able to induce uh, cell differentiation. So maybe uh, there is some other substance, yet unknown, which acts on the GPR55 and uh, acts in this uh, model. And finally, of course, uh, we would like some exit to practice, some outcome, and we would like to know how could we use such differentiation activity. Maybe we can uh, make a regeneration stimulator out of the NSO dopamines. Maybe not, time will say. Uh, and finally, here are my colleagues, uh, which uh, contributed a lot to this work. And thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yes. Maybe I yes, missed it in your talk. Uh, Maybe I missed it in your talk, but you were uh, using the term signal transduction and quite nice terms. Uh, is there any more about the localization of uh, this isolated dopamine, some neurons or anything else. So, uh, in fact, this is my question about. Yes, I heard that there are not a great amount, but maybe some particular places of their localization, the particular neurons or the particular regions of the brain or whatever. Well, uh, the highest concentration of these substances was detected in striatum. Um, here, I guess I have some data on that. Uh, well, not exactly. Anyway, uh, the highest concentration is in striatum. Uh, 
Then the concentration decreases to the lowest one in uh, dorsal root uh, ganglion of the spinal cord. And also some very low concentration is detected in uh, blood plasma, but very low. Uh, as to the other organs, uh, there is no data available. Just additional small question. Are there any hints that acyl dopamines can be neurotransmitters? Mm. Well, they could be at least uh, neuromodulators via uh, cannabinoid receptors and uh, TRP1 receptor. Why not? Um, any more questions? Yes, please. I have a question regarding the metabolism of your nadas when you add them to the cells. Are they metabolized by cells after you add it? Uh, or be deacylated? Or? The frequencies of uh, nadas uh, indeed occur, but this is a quite slow process. And uh, in fact, uh, several enzymes for this process are known. This is uh, fatty acid uh, amide hydrolase and uh, another hydrolase, which I will not uh, remember exactly right now. But um, in fact, they, uh, these in enzymes are able to hydrolyze these molecules, but they are also inhibited by them, so the, pro uh, the process is slow. On the other hand, um, if the fatty acid residue is uh, fully unsaturated, it could be recognized by the uh, standard enzymes of uh, uh, arachidonic acid metabolism, for example, lipoxygenases or uh, cyclopsygenases, um, also not with a uh, very high affinity, but these enzymes are able to oxidize. Um, and finally, um, um, the dopamine residue could be methylated by its uh, hydroxyl uh, group and uh, sulfated, but perhaps not in brain. But in uh, tissue homogeneities, we observe this process. Okay, thank you. Does anyone more have questions? Um, I have a question here. Um, are they actually present in molecular solution or are they forming by cells? Uh, after the concentration of 100 micromoles, for polyunsaturated ones, they do not form micelles. Uh, if we have uh, a fully saturated fatty acid residue, for example, uh, palmitic acid or uh, steric acid, so they are uh, able to form micelles already at uh, maybe 50 micromoles per liter. Okay, um, and um, how are they released? How are they? Um acyl uh, dopamine is released into the uh, medium? Uh, it is not exactly known. Are they, in fact, are they present mostly in the cell or are they present in the interstitial liquid? Mm, no one looked at that. Uh, well, it is, if they, it is if they considered don't get released, then how can you talk about any signal transduction? It is considered that they are released on demand so they are not stored, but somehow released. Uh, there are uh, specific transporters for these uh, molecules and other uh, endocannabinoids such as uh, uh, ethanol amide of uh, arachidonic acid known. Mm, the uh, uh, amides of arachidonic acid are, pres are present in much higher quantities and uh, so they are indeed released from the cell. As to the uh, uh, dopamine amides, so if we see them in human plasma, so... But they may be, uh, uh, acyl dopamines can be bound to, for example, uh, human serenaldemine. Mm, yes, they, uh, they could, so mm. what? <laughs> no, this is just simply to say that they may not act as molecular entities. Uh, but if they are bound to albumin, they oh, by the way, in exchange yeah. with the medium. We have right? 22 seconds left. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but still we have. Um, 
Okay, in that case, we can continue our discussion, lively discussion later. Sure. Um, and we will proceed with our 